Welcome to my channel, I'm Fabio from Gumblitz Den and this is my very first video on how to make an ice base. Okay, let's start making our ice base. I will follow all the steps I did for this base and I will make two different models. Product I'm using are matte white texture paste, extra with gel from Vallejo and snow powder. As a range of color I chose for that project the blue line of Army Painter, but you can use it GW, Vallejo, Scale 75 or whatever you prefer. But the very secret ingredient for this project is the UV resin. I'll tell you more about this amazing product later in the video. I start securing the base with blue tack to better handle the two bases over cork. Now that the bases are ready we can apply a primer. As a primer I'm using a Panzer Grey from Vallejo and I'm using the airbrush for many reasons. It's easy and less messy, especially if you don't have a lot of ventilated space to use spray can. As you can see, you can hit the surface without overspray much around. If you want to know more about our brushing process for beginner or advanced technique, drop a comment below. After giving the primer, it's time for a wet palette. I add some water and baking paper, less expensive of specific well palette papers. The first color I use is dark sky. You can use a very dark color to simulate the depth beneath the eyes. Well palette is a must have tool for our hobby because it preserves the colors for a long time and you can reuse it for multiple sessions. I also apply a second layer to make sure that the color is evenly placed. It is a very important step as you will not be able to modify the color later. In this video I'm making also a second base, this time with a greenish turquoise, to show you that you can simulate different depth of the eyes, in this case a less depth, which results from a brighter color for the sea bottom. On the second base I'm doing the opposite of the previous one, so I'm using bright colors for the center and I use darker color on its border. Now it's time for our secret ingredient, UV resin. I'm using UV resin because its transparency will be a perfect touch to simulate the tridimensionality on the base. Because you can control very well using an heavy duty brush, because you can use it as a glue, but most importantly its surface tension does not break easily and you can use it without the risk of spilling it out from the base. Once you put the resin under the sun or a UV torch, it dries extremely fast and it becomes a hard surface. With UV resin I casted rock eyes, which are extremely realistic and that can be used as an additional to our base. I casted with the blue stuff from Green Stuff World, and if you want to see how I made them, let me know in the comment below, I will make a dedicated tutorial for them. So as you can see, UV resin is everything. Now that the bases are dry, we move to the next step, sanding. I'm using a 600p sanding paper to simulate the very light scratches on the surface. There are also sponges with rough surface that also are quite good for this process. I prefer starting with light touch and go with the heavier lines later, just to control the process better. I apply small pressure on the surface with my sandpaper and I go in different directions to simulate the texture of a hard weathered ice surface. Once we are happy with our scratches, let's give an extra touch to create more depth in the ice texture. I'm using a cutter to shape better lines that will give the illusion of different levels over the surface. I'm very happy with the second base too, which is the first time I'm making it with such bright colors, and I can feel the potentiality of using UV resin to make our wargaming bases. Back on the wet palette, I place all the color I have selected, Viking Blue, Royal Clock, Elemental Bolt, Toxic Mist and White. This step will increase the sense of volume on the base. 
I start applying from darker to brighter color on the base borders, leaving the center clean. Then we increase the U, reaching a very bright colors. I keep the color very diluted with water, as I can control them better, and colors can blend together to simulate the irregularities of the eye surface. Kind of a wet blending, but very, very diluted. On the second base I use dark color on one side and brighter to the other side to increase the contrast between the two sides and the center. This is a very fun step as you do not need to be so accurate and also because in the next step part of the base surface we just colored will be covered with snow. Last step. We use snow powder, the heavy gel and the acrylic white paste. We mix all together with a craft stick. So these three products combined will give a more realistic finisher on the model. The white paste is the base, snow powder is texture and the heavy gel will make the final wet look to the composition. I'm applying the mix to the border of the base like I'm making an ice cream. We can apply a second layer to intensify the effect. Also you can add some extra snow powder when the second layer is in place but still fresh for an extra touch. On the second base I decide to go with the less snow because I want to keep balance between the brightness of the center and the border, but this is really a personal choice. Ok, so the very last step is applying gloss varnish just on the center to make the eye surface shine and to counterbalance the opacity that the sandpaper made on the UV erasing and to make it more cool. There are thousands of possibilities for using this technique and you may run wild your imagination. I made these bases for my Sea Wolf company, one of the 12 companies of the Space Wolf in Warhammer 40k to simulate the harsh condition of their planet, Fenris. With this technique it is possible to include whatever you like beneath the eyes. I here decided to maintain the theme of Kraken and I sculpted the creepy eye beneath the eyes. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, if you have any questions just drop a comment below. If you like this video, considering subscribe, this will help me a lot in producing more videos like this. I'll see you on the next one.